one of the worst ideas I have heard out of you in recent history, Kyle. Darby cast Wild Card Friday. You'll notice my voice sounds pretty sweet right now. I did a lot of yelling over the past couple days. Out of respect for the country. What does that look like? A lot of USA chants? And that's pretty much it. Kyle, even you started a USA chant. I am so impressed with that out of you. And while we're on the topic of the USA, on the 4th, I was walking the wonderful dog that I annexed from Kyle, because you were a pretty poor dog owner, Kyle. We can't all be good at everything, right? Like, I can't play the piano. But I'll tell you what I can do is develop a strong relationship with a beast, right? People see it, they ask me if I'm a dog trainer, and I just say, no, I've got a commitment to excellence in the animal companionship department. But yeah, 4th of July, saw a Latino fellow as I was walking on the beach with the dog, and I said, happy 4th, and he said, gay? I was like, oh, man, you must be new here. You must be pretty new. Kyle, you were nowhere to be found, and that's okay. You need days off, right? A couple of vacation days. I don't even know what you've been up to, Kyle, for probably like a third of the week, every week. You don't tell me. And there's part of that that I respect, but there's also parts of that that I scratch my head and I say, is Kyle okay? The answer is obviously not, Kyle. I mean, look at you. You got bags under your eyes. You've been staying up too late. And that's one of the first things to go before you start making really crap choices, which is going to be a major focus of this, Kyle. If you're new to the show, you should probably split. You should probably listen to a podcast that isn't so fucking sweet. Listen to something that reinforces your sense of calm. Because this is not going to do that in all of the episodes. This isn't a podcast where Kyle and I sip daiquiris and say, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what LeBron wore to a party. Now that's not this, uh, boy, is that not it. Nor is it firsthand accounts of parties. You wouldn't believe how much blow Kyle and I did at a party. No, that's not part of our equation. And it's not going to be. For any of you who are rooting for Kyle to develop a coke addiction, I'm pleased to disappoint you. Kyle, nice ethics sometimes is what you have. Just say no. Nancy Reagan, she started that campaign. And then drugs really got out of hand in the country. So what do you even do with that, right? But this is not going to be an episode about the D.A.R.E. program, which really came up super short, if we're being honest. Let's just take a time out and address the D.A.R.E. program. Good Lord, I'm never going to drink, I'm not going to smoke, and I'm not going to do drugs. What that turned into for a majority of Millennials and Gen Z's, if they're still doing it, is I will probably not do needle drugs. Mission accomplished. Good job, Dare. Way to go. But I get it. People are so bummed out and their brains are fried from technology and raging. I feel like the entire country is suffering from a dopamine shortage. And let me shoot my hand up. I will tell you that in the past couple years, I've become more addicted to tech. I notice that I have major neck issues. Tech neck, staring at a screen, editing cool videos, maybe make a music video from time to time, but that's tough on the neck. Very appealing to my brain to make a tasteful music video, Kyle, right? You've seen those music videos, good lord. What a 
treat, I think, is something you've said to me repeatedly. No, it was, what a huge treat. That was a direct quote from you. I remember that a couple months ago. Words of affirmation. Sometimes they land with me, Kyle. Sometimes I remember compliments. That's one of them. Good job. But let's get into not the dopamine shortage of the country as a result of tech. Let's not get into high-level discussions about websites, which we could. We totally could. I'm a sucker for a high-level discussion as it relates to websites. Name a website. Yahoo News. Let's take a deep dive, right? However, Kyle was flirting with the idea of dating a female psychologist. Oh, fuck, right? I know a lot of you heard that, and you may have thrown up in your mouths. You may have shed a single Native American tear, where it's like things will never be the same again. That's what the Native Americans bake into those cakes, those tears. Like, damn it, it's over. And Kyle, this would be the end of you. I want to warn you against this, okay? And this is more a bro warning because there's some really excellent psychologists out there. There are. There's a lot of shitty ones and a large proportion of those crappy ones happen to be female. Militant enforcers of a status quo full of nonsense. Kyle, that would have been exhausting for you? Hearing this gal's shitty takes on everything? Now that the American Psychological Association, Kyle, has formally recognized disorders like gaming disorder and like angry white guy disorder, they've lost a lot of credibility, have they not? Not with female psychologists, though. Boy, are they beating that drum. Kyle, that would have been so rough, dude. I would have never seen you. You'd stop showing up to work. I tried pulling this off once, Kyle. I really did. I met a female psychologist on a dating app. And I rarely talk about things that I've actually experienced on the Darby cast, but I might be willing to do it. Unsurprisingly, she had major daddy issues. Nothing was ever her fault. It was fuckyoudad.com. And that's not to say that parents can't mess up. But it's like, if you're a professional, you hold an advanced degree, and you're still blaming dysfunction in your life squarely on the shoulders of your pops, that's going to be tricky. That's going to make for an interesting therapeutic philosophy, is it not? A gal with a serious anti-male bend in her vagina or her professional studies, professional pursuits, bentvagina.net. Kyle, don't buy that one. I don't want to be associated with that. If you're new to the show, I throw out a lot of key website ideas. That one's not really good. That's a rare miss. But it's actually a hit in some regards because I'm orienting us around what not to do. And sometimes that's just as valuable as what to do, right? So Kyle, let's keep riffing on that concept. You pay attention. Okay, pal? So dating a female psychologist, not okay. I should have known this in the beginning. And the fact of the matter is I pretty much did. After about three weeks of dating this chick, I was like, oh, fuck, I, I hate you. I, I really hate you. But then I dated her for like six months. And why is that? Why is that? Some of you are asking. She was hot. Did not have a bent vagina. It was pretty clutch. And I needed stories. I'm a sucker for dysfunction because I like integrating that into my creative process. So you are my muse. You are a very dangerous person. You're very unhinged. Therefore, I need to know more stories. I'll give you another example of that. She was not a psychologist. Her name sounded like that of a porn star. And that's a red flag enough to like not do a date. She'd be like, 
there's something that gives me the willies just about your name. What was her name? Houston Hammer. What the fuck is that about, right? Like, where did that even come from? But I went on a date with Houston Hammer, and naturally we met on a dating app. This was years ago, before I had sworn off dating apps completely, realizing that that's not where you go to find the right kind of people, for men or women. What did it communicate to me about myself is that I wasn't the right kind of person. And that if I were to take a little ownership, I needed to pivot away from those things and become the right kind of bro. But I found so much dysfunction on these dating apps. A lot of female psychologists, Kyle. What a mess. We'll pivot back to the original female psychologist after I flesh out Houston Hammer. Because if you're listening to this, boy, do you want to know about her program. Do you not? So Hammer, we go out on a date. And she's like pretty good looking. Has this inappropriate librarian vibe to her where she's wearing glasses and she had uh she had a pretty explosive chest huge tits Kyle have you heard of them but our first date we sat down at this restaurant I bought her a cocktail that came with a flower in it some kind of tropical whodunit nice presentation is what I'm trying to say I went for your industry standard whiskey, old fashioned, very tasty, classic, festive without dipping into a space of needing to get my ass kicked by somebody who saw it and said, like, what are, what are you even doing? If you're a waiter or a waitress and some guy orders a cocktail that traditionally is served with a flower in it, stop him from making that mistake. Okay. People helping people. This has never really been a problem area for me, but some guys get wrapped up in it. They think to themselves, I want to fit in. I want to connect with this chick, so I'm going to go with the same beverage that she's getting, the one with a flower in it. Boy, doesn't that look cute. Ouch, right? Guys, if you are describing anything other than the female in your life, the woman of significance, if you're describing anything as cute other than that gal, a puppy, maybe a kitten, or somebody's failed attempt at doing something meaningful. Be like, way to take a real cute shot at driving the car well. Maybe you say that if you see a traffic accident. Really cute job trying to drive a car. There are a few other times that the word cute is appropriate. But if you're a server, don't let Anybody make that mistake if they're a dude. So we're drinking these cocktails though, right? And I say to this gal, I say, hey, Houston Hammer. I used to always refer to her by her first and last name, which is pretty cool, actually. But I made a request of her. I said, Houston Hammer, elevator pitch me. What are you about? Who are you? And she says, I was sent here. Huge red flag from the get-go. Well, what the hell does that even mean, right? I was sent here, good Lord. But I didn't interrupt. I let her keep going. She said, I was sent here to break an interdimensional curse set upon my family because my great-grandmother dabbled with a Ouija board. Wow, right? Like, what an intro. But me, I'm a sucker for extreme dysfunction and the wonderful stories that come from such a thing, and so I leaned the hell in. I said, okay, Houston Hammer, good job. What does that mean for you moving forward? She said, well, I have a lot of crystals at my house. I said, I hope none of those are meth, no crystal meth. I can deal with quartz, but meth is not, I don't like it for you and by extension for me. I said, tell me some stories. It sounds like you've got some interesting stuff going on. And she said, my house has ghosts. I said, well, of course it does. What are they like? What do they do? She said, well, they typically attack the guys I'm dating. 
I went on a date with a guy and I took him home and I'm already like, okay, so you're really morally casual. This is definitely not going to work out for any other purpose than fantastic stories. But we get back into it. It's like, tell me one of these stories about one of these ghosts threatening one of your gentleman callers. She said, I woke up at 3 a.m. the other night, which is the witching hour. I said, what, the, what did you just say to me? She said, you know, the witching hour. And I said, no, I don't know what the witching hour is. She said, that's when witch stuff goes down. Now let's pause. Some of you are thinking to yourselves right now, why didn't you bail? Others of you are thinking to yourselves, I love what you're doing. Well, as there is a third group saying, I want to hear about this female psychologist. And to that, I say, let me finish with Hammer first, okay? So she says it was the witching hour and I woke up and I looked over and the guy that was over was struggling to breathe. He was being asphyxiated by a ghost. His body was lifted off the bed and then he got slammed around and almost died. And if you run into a conversational crossroads like this, you got to step up and keep the conversation alive and say something to validate the nonsense that you just heard, which is what I did. And what did I say? I said, ghosts are so violent. And she was like, yeah, I know. Then I said, well, tell me more. What, what else has gone on? She said, well, I have a spiritual advisor that my parents pay for. And I said, well, how about we talk about your parents before we talk about your spiritual advisor? She said, okay. I said, what are they all about? And she's like, well, neither of them are actually my biological parents. They're just a Jewish couple that I moved in with a couple of years ago. And now I call them my parents and they prefer that. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Good job. Really awesome. A plus. And I didn't want to hear any more about that. I was like, this is too nuts. Tell me about your spiritual advisor that coaches you on demons. Because I feel like I'll be able to appreciate that more than whatever the hell your home life is like. But before we move on, good on this couple for taking in this porn star sounding wounded bird. But that's fucking weird, too. We have to call it out. We definitely do. That's something that we all appreciate about the Darby cast. I appreciate that. You appreciate that? Is when we don't have to come up with some backwards explanation for something. We don't have to apologize for it. We just say, that's weird. That's not okay. And even if we don't quite know what's not okay about it, we don't need to get academic about it either. We can just say, that's weird, and move on. So that's what we're going to do. But back to this spiritual advisor, how do you get that job, right? Boy, would that take a lot of confidence to just try to give mentally ill porn stars coaching. Imagine if that were your profession of choice. You just put a sign on a building. Like, like you do with any business. And then in walks Houston Hammer saying like, I've got a ghost problem and it's way above my pay grade. I thought I could deal with it. I feel like there's a couple different kinds of spiritual advisors in this arena. The people who take themselves very seriously and believe that they are combating ghosts. And there's the con artists who are like, I don't care about anything, so I'm just going to tell people that I'm helping them diffuse ghost conflict. I'm a ghost conflict mediator. Really cool job title, by the way. I'd love to see a reality show about that. Ghost divorce court would be different. Would definitely be different. And then what's the third category of spiritual advisor? Ghost Wrangler, the ones who are 100% legit, no bullshit. They are in touch with the shadow realm, and they exist for one purpose, and that is to enact violence. 
on spirits. <sighs> Boy, do we need more of those people out in the world. That's a thankless job, and that's also one that you're not going to get paid a whole lot for. That's a passion project, and we all deserve to have those. We don't need them. We deserve them. But she went, Houston Hammer, she went to her spirit advisor who gave her beads. Not like a rosary, but just some colored beads. And she told Houston, shower with these. Never take them off. If they change color, demons surrounding you will have left. So she wore these beads around and they didn't change color. What does that mean? The demons weren't having it. Boy, were they not fooled. So about a month later, this is what Houston Hammer is relaying to me. She said, I realized these weren't the right caliber of bead. And my spirit advisor realized that she had messed up. She had not evaluated the demon well enough and that I actually needed a different variety of anti-demon beads. Good catch, right? So then she issues her a new set of beads, and Houston Hammer's wearing these day and night, and eventually these beads that were painted red, or they existed as red, they turned white. And what does that mean? Ghosts and demons were defeated. We all know how that works. It's high level. I've never told this story to anyone. Not because I was ashamed or embarrassed of it, but because I treasured it so much. I was like, some things need to just be for me. But then I realized I was being selfish and that the world needed to hear a little bit more about dropping the hammer on ghosts. Hammeringghosts.com Kyle? That works. That plays. Buy it. Price is not an issue. Whatever it costs, okay? It's a business write-off, Kyle. Remember, we know business here, Kyle. Boy, do we. So allegedly, Hammer's ghosts had been hammered to shit and exercised? Were they indwelling her, or were they around her? Unclear. But they split. They had had enough of those danger beads. And then I went out on like five more dates with this chick. I was willing to cover the cost of her eating just so I could hear more stories. Does that make me a bad guy, Kyle? Or does that make me an investigator? Special investigator. But this is the kind of stuff that's happening out on dating apps. Let's just kind of bring it back to what we were talking about and then pivot towards the female psychologist that I realized that I just couldn't stand about three weeks in and then dated her for six months. You know what she told me, Kyle? It was about a month into dating her. This was about a week after I knew that I couldn't stand her. That I kind of hated her guts because... Boy, did she have an opinion on everything and had the sense that her advanced degree made her an authority on way too much. She was trying to instruct me on geopolitics, and I don't think she could name more than 10 countries in the world. I don't think she knew a single historical date where anything ever happened. I don't know if she's ever read a book. Okay. One of those. Overeducated idiots. Who think that a piece of paper makes them a genius. It's like, no. They have lowered the academic standards at every institution. Higher ed, plus certifying boards that issue licensure. And now you just have a bunch of morons parading around as professionals. You see this a lot in the psychological field as well as the legal profession, as well as most professions. Overregulated and oversaturated with people who struggle in the thoughts department. She was one of them. But one of the most fascinating things that she said to me about anything 
after dating for about a month, was I think I could lead a cult, maybe even start a revolution. And boy, did that make my ears perk up because I was like, all right, this is going to be good. Game face. I have a friend who's really good at keeping a straight face through all things, and I've learned to integrate that. So she tells me, she's like, yeah, I think I should, not just could, but I think I should lead a cult. Like, well, what does that look like? She's like, I'm really convincing at stuff. And I'm like, boy, are you not? You know what was the craziest thing about this chick? And like, obviously, it's not the craziest thing because there were really crazy parts about her. But she used to bounce her cases of her clients off of me and say, what do you think I should do with this one? And I am not a trained psychologist. However, I did give her feedback on challenging clients. She issued the plays that I had called. And then these people made radical progress in their lives. So what the hell do you even do with that? I became a proxy psychologist for people I'd never met before. I saved multiple marriages through my sexy psychologist, incompetent girlfriend, if we can call her that. How does that sit with you? Are you smiling right now or are you saying that's not okay? Because if you're part of the group that's saying that's not okay, you're right, but also fuck you because helping people matters, okay? She could lead a cult? Not true. Not true at all. She expressed some kind of admiration for little mustache German fella and was like, I could do that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is so different. Have you ever met a chick who boasted a claim like that? Anywhere in that zip code? I could pull off a Hitler. What? The leadership abilities of Joe Stalin are not out of my reach. Excuse me? I find Chairman Mao inspiring. Did I hear that correctly? But this gal had never really heard of Stalin or Mao. So she just went for the big H. Or in Spanish, grande H. Or is it H grande? Kyle? I don't think anybody's calling Hitler that, but... That was so weird. That's what you get on dating apps. Female psychologists who think they have a splash of Hitlerian something in them. Whoa, right? Different. So different. Is there a part of me that misses going on the dating apps? Not for companionship or finding a romantic partner that would really work, but for extreme chaos and unrestricted nonsense? Yes, I do miss that. I used to just attract the most wounded birds. And what does that say about me? Probably quite a bit. Am I willing to analyze it? No, I'm not. What are some other fascinating things about this female psychologist? She found her stepbrother attractive in a way that she verbalized. And it was not okay at all. And I was like, we're not, um, I'm only going to stick around for a little while longer because as hilarious as all this is, it seems to be too much. Good on me for setting boundaries, right? But Kyle, love is tough. And you shouldn't make it any harder on yourself by A, being on dating apps and B, dabbling with a female psychologist. Or just a crappy psychologist, period, ladies. How about that? Let me just broaden this. Ladies, you would do very well if you dated a psychologist who was good. They could probably help you out a lot. I don't know if they want to take that on. Probably a lot of good male psychologists have tried to date women. And boy, have they ended up tired. They're like, this is super challenging. And why wouldn't it be? People are losing their minds. I was thinking about this this morning on the dog walk. I was thinking, 
people are depressed and traumatized from their consumption of raging media. But then rather than having straightforward explanations for why they're bummed out, they just like blame it on the patriarchy or like some kind of like privilege who done it. And boy, does that lead to really silly conclusions. I don't know how I'm going to integrate all these things that I've said into a cohesive message, but you better believe I'm going to try. Many of the things that are being discussed right now in our society are fucking stupid. You know this. They don't actually matter at all. There's really a couple core issues, and they're mainly economic in nature. And dating is tough right now, but there's also economic features behind that. And what I'm trying to get at is the difficult time it is for many men and women to find wholesome, authentic connections. What are the major impediments to that? Money and warped perceptions via the internet. And extreme trauma beaten into the minds of the population by media. So how do you undo that? How does a dysfunctional society where men and women are alienated and not really firing on all cylinders? And listen, I'm probably one of them. One of the dudes who's not like firing on all cylinders. I'm firing on some cylinders and probably a lot of them, but not all of them, right? But if you're dating, Kyle, you're going to notice that you've come across a lot of weird people. Gals can identify with this too. They've probably come across some really fucking weird dudes. Not the weird that's entertaining, but the weird that is concerning. Let me show you my toenail collection. I keep it in heaps of toilet paper. There's probably gals that have heard stuff like that in recent history. I hope that Houston Hammer is a rare individual, but I don't think she is, unfortunately. I think people are losing their minds. And people are pointing to all these major issues and saying dating's tough, leadership stinks. Men, 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 women, women, women. And it's like, listen, the only fundamental problems that really exist are young men's relationships to power and economic security. This is something that the Hitler enthusiast psychologist had no real understanding of. Some of you are asking, what did she understand? That's unclear. But we could talk about the dysfunction that exists in dating on a case-by-case basis, plenty, but it wouldn't get us anywhere. You've got a bunch of traumatized people that have lost their sense of purpose and identity. They're not doing super well in the economics department. They feel as though the future does not belong to them, and therefore, things are screwy. This was years ago, these stories that I'm talking about, and those are precursors to a lot of nonsense, where it's like, wow, these gals are so confused as to what their purpose and identity is all about. But that also comes from their fathers being rough. It comes from the guys they're dating being rough. But what is the underlying issue that all of this nonsensical dating whodunitry really points to? Boy, are people lost. Females are not sure what their role in society is. Males also struggling to figure that out. American society, Western society in general, has told men that they suck and that they deserve to be treated like shit and that they should also work for peanuts. They should contribute to a system that hates them. So if we look at my behavior in this, where I'm just thinking this is hilarious, that is reflective of somebody who's not all the way bought in on society. Okay, let me shoot my hand up and say that's pretty shitty on my part to entertain this and not shut it down and be like, you need to fucking cool it. You need to take a lot of plays off. Your degree did nothing for you. We're going to have to reinvent whatever it is that we can 
to make sure that you don't become a heightened version of what you already are. Okay? Psychologist chick or okay, Houston Hammer. Where has the coaching been? It would have come from a high quality dude who was highly engaged in society, but you can make a pretty reasonable case of why high quality dudes or just dudes in general, average dudes, are like, I'm not really having things the way they're going. And that should be keyed in on. People want to talk about dating and all the pitfalls and mishaps because it is pretty entertaining if we're being honest. But it points at a larger dysfunction between men and women. One that should be keyed in on. What came first, dysfunctional men or dysfunctional women? Hard to say. But some people are nuts. And there's not a whole lot you can do about that. But when there seems to be dysfunction as a feature and not a bug of the program, maybe time to reassess. And you know what? Let's pivot into a larger issue. Men dropping out of society. Because Kyle, there's only so many of these dates that anyone can go on before they're like, what am I even doing? Why am I participating in this? Is this all there is? A couple different answers to that. Don't shop for a mattress in a landfill, right? Online dating. If you want to find a high quality chick who has a baseline understanding of anything, you're going to have to go to church. You're going to have to find a gal who has a sturdy relationship with JC and her father. No exceptions. I just don't think it's possible. I think it's very challenging to find stability anywhere else. You can look at these situations in a couple different contexts. One being they're hilarious, and you're not wrong. These are hilarious. But it speaks to a spiritual sickness of our society and the fact that men and women are just so fucking lost in their own right. If I can self-indict for a second, what the hell was I doing? Why was I not posting up in church and getting in with the men's ministry and making strong, sturdy handshakes at every turn until some bro came up to me and said, I've got an A-plus daughter and I'd like you to meet her. No, instead, I was hanging out with hobbyist demon hunters and poorly educated narcissists who thought they were really sharp. My goodness, what a mess. But let's go back to the psychologist suggesting she could lead a cult. Very silly. Very, very silly. Because what she was pointing at was that she could lead a revolution. And that's not really how revolutions work. Revolutions throughout history happen at the hands of disaffected young men. Miserable women can contribute to the misery of young men, but miserable women aren't a national security threat. They might be shitty neighbors. They might be lame dates. But that does not mean they are precursors of unspeakable violence, which young men are. And I think if you want to have a conversation about dating, you should probably have a conversation instead about the role of men and women in society and how to correct it immediately, if not sooner, to prevent society from descending into widespread chaos, which it pretty much is right now. Is it not? I mean, goodness gracious. My participation in this nihilism adjacent. I'm coaching myself away from that actively with the help of JC, obviously. But Kyle, you thinking about dating a female psychologist is that puts you in the danger zone of nihilism. Dating is not about masturbating with other people's bodies. It's about finding somebody who you can connect with on a deep level. And then you come to the conclusion that you start a family. I could riff on stories like this for a long time. I could tell you about the dating mishaps. And I could tell you about my crappy role in it. Because it takes two to tango, right? But as society bangs the drums of what's dysfunctional and who's to blame, I think we're ignoring the larger issues. In that 
a lot of dudes don't feel as though they have any sense of ownership in life or their circumstances, and therefore they are just allowing utter nonsense in their lives and saying, who gives a shit? If these chicks are crazy, who cares? I'll date them anyway. Never stepping up and saying, get out of the psychological profession, Katrina. Those aren't your parents, Houston Hammer. Despite whatever the hell it is they're allowing you to call them, they are not your parents. You're not a demon hunter. You're not. But the bar has really been lowered in terms of standards for everything. It speaks to the spiritual decline of the country. Is that people don't have high standards for others. They don't have high standards for themselves. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong and young females represent a national security issue. Maybe they do. But as things spiral out of control and we try to talk about how jacked up dating is, we're zoomed in too tightly and we're not looking at the larger pieces at play. Where you have many underqualified people LARPing as professionals, the economic outlook for dudes is rough. Dysfunctional dating would course correct if you had dudes in better economic and spiritual lanes. Not going to lie. Because that might encourage gals who have harnessed themselves to surrogate periphery activities to drop their nonsense and be like, I'm going to link up with this guy and do things right. We need more psychologists, but we don't need more shitty ones. Men and women are both horribly unhappy, but for different reasons. And to correct the unhappiness of women, you correct the unhappiness of young men. That's how things work. And if you don't correct the happiness of young men, then society falls apart and descends into catastrophic violence. And then order restores itself. But I don't think anybody wants to go that route of widespread chaos and violence. Sure, it's really hilarious to talk about dysfunctional dating, but it's not important in the grand scheme of things. Grand scheme of things, it's important to secure an economic future for citizens, specifically young men, so they feel like they have skin in the game, so they don't act in a way that is nihilistic or nihilistic adjacent and excuse terrible behavior within themselves or in others. It's pretty straightforward. How amazing are high quality, high ethics, high spiritual value ladies? Can we just say that for a second? Incredible. Same goes to be said with high ethics, high integrity, my spiritual value bros. They make powerful couples, powerful families, and powerful regions. But that's all disintegrating. We can go through all the reasons why there is so much dysfunction, but it traces back to economics and nature. We can talk about symptoms. We can talk about the thorns on the rose bush, but I'd rather talk about the roots. But that's DarbyCast for you. That's Wild Card Friday. We're going to wrap it up. Kyle, don't go on that date. Just save yourself the trouble, huh, pal? <laughs>